We're back in Gary County for the Leonard and Mark show. Now, last time we were here, they cut up a beef. Such a positive response to that. We get people from all over the world that are watching this segment on beef. Guess what? Today, who we got right here? Large Marge. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I like my pork. And you say it's not going to take as long with me. Shouldn't take long. Nope. Pretty simple. Pretty so cool. I'm going to step back and let's get this process going. All right. Sounds great. It's going to use our low rater to drop the pig down. So now we have two separate halves of the pig. What we have here is the soot off the pig and the kidneys. It's good, clean fat. Uh, people make bird feed out of this. But really, the best use for it is to render it down, make lard. So Mark's cutting a third rib here. That's going to separate the shoulder from the rest of the carcass. And he's going to cut right behind the H bone on the pig here. So this is the uh, front shoulder and the head attached to the pig. Mark's going to remove the head, and then we'll break down the the head to show you different things that we can do with that. So when we have the head, there's two, uh, two or three different things we can do with this. First thing you'll notice is this big piece of meat here. This is the jowl, but most commonly you hear a jowl bacon, and this is the jowl. Now what you would do with this is you would run it through a cure, maybe let it soak or use an injector, and smoke it, and then you would slice it just like you would bacon. Underneath this jowl is a little piece of heaven uh, it's called cheek meat. I don't know if you've ever had cheek meat, Tim, but it's very tender, great piece of meat. This is the whole shoulder. So he's just using his knife to kind of go along the seam and the uh, bone of the neck bones, leaving as much meat as possible on the Boston butt and the picnic. We have the neck bones, which is great for uh, stock and stew meat and things like that. So here's a little, just a flap of uh, meat that's going to come off the picnic and the Boston butt here. And you can use this for country ribs, uh, just a lean piece of meat here. You'd use it for sausage, great for sausage. Now what we're going to have here is Mark take off the copa, and then we're going to make some steaks for the copa. So the copa, what the copa is, this is a nice, it's pretty much like the chuck eye on a beef. But it's well marbled, it's tender, and has great flavor. We have a couple different parts that we're going to remove. We're going to take the shank off from the picnic. And what we've done with it, we've cross cut it. To, this would be great for braising uh, in your oven. See a lot of meat in there, uh, a lot of lean meat. So that's what makes it great for braising. This is the picnic. What a lot of people would do with this is they would just cut it in half, make a two to three pound roast, or they, it would be added to trim to make sausage. So what we have here is we have the whole Boston butt. You know, this probably weighs around 10 to 12 pounds. Perfect for your uh, home smoker. You know, you're gonna get roughly 60% of your yield off this. And uh, you know, it's gonna be great for pulled pork. You know, if you just wanna make a sandwich out of it, whatever you wanna do. So Mark's just following the seam of the copa. It's a very small seam. Restaurants, a lot of times use it for steaks. But you know, this is the copa as a toe. We're just gonna cut it into you know, about an inch steaks here, and we'll show you what they look like. So if we look here, you see those perfect little medallions. I would imagine for grilling, that would just be amazing. Yeah, if you have a date, this might be what you need to take her on. Now this is the midsection of the pig. So we have, what we have here is the rib section and the loin, the sirloin tip here, or the sirloin roast on a pig. We have the spare ribs and the baby back ribs. We also had the pork belly, which would be cut off and made into bacon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this in half, separate the loin from the belly. Now in the loin section, this here is the tenderloin. A lot of times, uh, and it's often mistaken in stores that the tenderloin is much larger. When you see a tenderloin that's this big and weighs about seven pounds in a store, what they're actually talking about is a boneless loin, which we'll show you here in a second. But the tenderloin, you know, it weighs roughly a pound, a pound and a half off really big pigs. You can get up to three pounds, but very small, tender piece of meat. We'll have Mark go ahead and remove this for you. He's just going to follow the backbone down the, 
loin here. You can see that once it gets a cut, he can basically just pull it away from the seams. It's uh, one of the greatest pieces on the pork. We're gonna remove the sirloin. We're gonna start this joint here and, and break it off from the loin. So we're gonna remove this bone out of the sirloin. If you wanted a sirloin roast, this is what it would be. Uh, I would suggest to take the bone out just because the bone is so large in here and there's a lot of part of the bone you can't see because it runs throughout the muscle. So this is the sirloin roast, really perfect for a family, you know, right around three to four pounds, lean, it has a nice fat cap on it, great piece of meat here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove the rib section from the loin section. So we're gonna start with the rib section here. Now, if we were to take this bone section off here, these would be where you would get your baby back ribs, but we're gonna leave these on for the moment and we're gonna make uh, bone-in pork chops off of these. And we're gonna show you what a chime pork chop looks like. Does that look pretty good, Tim? Oh yeah, I know what I'm having tonight. These are your typical bone-in rib chops. Well, a lot of times what you'll see chefs do is they'll take the bit of meat off uh, the end here and kind of make a handle. So the, what a chef would call this is a French chop. So basically what you're doing is you're taking the, the meat off the bone, exposing the bone here. It kind of makes like a little handle here. So what we have left is the loin. What we'll do is we'll take off this bone part right here. We'll take off the chime and we'll make this into a boneless loin here. This is a very difficult thing to do, be able to get this jagged bone with so many different vertebrae going down the loin out without gouging up the loin. Mark did a great job here. So this would be your typical loin roast. You know, a lot of times what they're doing is they're just cutting a steak off this and frying it up, but we'll leave this whole. There's just several things that you could do with it. You could cut your boneless chops off here, or you can leave it whole, which is a great thing to do too, make a roast off of it. The next part may be everyone's favorite part. What we have here is the belly. And the, right now, it's still got the spare ribs attached. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the spare ribs off. He's just gonna take his knife and go around the bone, keeping his knife and blade against the bone so he's not gouging the, uh, the belly, but he's leaving uh, some meat on the spare ribs because no one wants to eat spare ribs with no meat on it. So this is the full spare rib. He's gonna take uh, the bone off here, the breastplate bone, and then he's gonna cut the spare ribs in half. This is easier to cook with. Uh, if you have a large family, a full spare ribs is good, but small family, you'd wanna cut them in half. That way you can maximize the use of them. How you're gonna make bacon off this is you're either gonna use two methods. You're gonna inject it, or you're going to let it sit in brine for a few days, let it soak up that uh, salt, sugar, whatever your spices may be, and uh, it's gonna come out uh, the same, looking the same, and then you just slice very thin, and that's where you get your bacon from. So we're moving on to the ham. We have the shank still attached to the ham, and then we have the actual ham up here. Then you can see where the sirloin was removed. Now. The ham can be uh, uh, done in several different ways, uh, but a lot of times what we have now is what we call city ham and fresh ham. So right now this would be a fresh ham. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a boneless ham. We're going to cure it and make it into a city ham. But Mark's gonna remove the shank now. This is a harder piece to take off if you're not familiar with where that joint is. And this is what your final shank's gonna look like. A couple things that you could do with this ham instead of making a city ham out of it, you can make ham steaks which are great. Uh, you can make ham roast, you know, two or three pound roast for your family. So he's removed that H bone. Now what he's gonna do is he's gonna run along that leg bone and remove it. Does that look good for your dog? <laughs> You'll see he's just going down the seam as that's popping open there. And what we would do, you would leave the ham like this. You would let it soak like this. That way it gets in the inside. You don't ever wanna soak it without removing the bone, open it up first. We would wrap it up, put it in a smokehouse, cook it for 16 to 17 hours and smoke it. And then we'd be able to either cut it in half, make Easter hams or slice it for deli meat. Well, thank you so much. I'm sure a lot of folks out there have been wanting to know each part of the pig. Now we know, thank you so much. What are we gonna cut up next? The lamb, what's the lamb? <laughs> Sounds good, man. Thank you so much, appreciate it.